We're back out here at the Big Lake once again, and today we're talking about a technique that catches fish and is so easy to do, yet so many of you anglers just aren't doing it. You don't want to miss this one. Stick around. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have your chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. Now, before we head out to the lake and get started in earnest, there's a few things I'd like to go over. First of all, for those of you who've been clicking the link for Omnia Fishing and getting your tackle through them, thank you. The little bit that I earn through that goes right back into the channel. It helps me put gas in the truck. It helps me do things like save up for a better camera, better editing software. It helps improve the channel. So thank you so much. And a big shout out and a big thank you to all of you who've been watching 100% of the video all the way through. The algorithm loves that. There is no better way to help get this channel to grow than by watching the videos all the way through. So for those of you who've been doing that, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Please continue to do so. And if you are a regular viewer of this channel and haven't subscribed, I implore you, please subscribe. We'd love to have you as a member of the Low Brow Fishing community. It's a great bunch we've got here, and we'd like to have you join us. Now, I have a really big announcement, and that is I'm going to be starting a new series called Challenge Me. Whenever I tell you that the Challenge Me is open, post a comment with hashtag Challenge Me, one word. Now, what that entails is I want you guys to challenge me to fish a particular technique, such as a drop shot or a Carolina rig or something I may not be so good at, something that's outside of my comfort zone, something that's new to me. Maybe fishing a Carolina rig with only a Ned bait or make me fish a drop shot with Uncle Josh's pork frogs or something to that effect. It's got to be doable. It's got to be something that I can reasonably catch fish with. So when I say the challenge me is open, that's what I mean. Post your comment with the hashtag challenge me. Whatever technique it is that you'd like for me to do, I'll pick from the best ones and I will make a video. I will dedicate an entire video from the best challenge me's. So, and that ought to be a lot of fun. It puts me to the test as an angler, and I'm sure it'll be entertaining for you as a viewer. But now, let's get on to what you got here for and head back out to the lake. Now we've all heard of a technique called dead sticking, wherein you just let your bait, your lure, whatever, just sit there. Texas rig, crankbait, whatever, throw it out there and just let it sit for 10 or 15 seconds or more. And sometimes, a lot of times, when you go to move that bait again, you'll have a fish on the end of it. It's a great way to get those fish who are line shy, who are pressured, but still curious about your bait. It's a great way to get them attracted to your bait. As you've seen many, many times on this channel, I'll cast my bait out and I'll do something. I'll have to pull a bird's nest out or I'll fiddle with the trolling motor or something else that distracts me for long enough for that fish to take that bait. And whenever I go to work my line again, well, there's a fish on the end of it. It's happened, especially here recently, as the big lake gets more and more pressured. It's something that happens more and more often. And I need to get... There we go. Oh, I got you. Keep pressure on you. I got you. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Woo. He's digging, too. That is a nice fish right there, kids. Look at that. Oh, he went after it, too. On some days, well, the fish are active. As soon as the lure hits the water, bam, you've got a fish. That happens plenty of times. But there's also times when we just need to be patient. 
And that's something that's so hard for a lot of anglers to do. They have such a hard time to let that bait just sit there. It's something that I struggle with. I work my baits too fast a lot of the time. And well, we all do. We need to slow down and just let that bait pause and rest. If there's a fish in the area and they're line shy or they're pressured or whatever, give them a chance to examine your bait. And a lot of times, like I said before, you'll look up and you'll see your line racing away or you'll go to pick up on that rod and there'll be a fish on the end of it. It's something that happens over and over and over again. It's a great way to catch pressured fish and it's a great way to teach yourself how to slow down. So even though we're moving slower, even though we're going much more slowly with long pauses in between when we're working that bait, well, we end up catching much more fish. And a lot of times, well, we can use it as a follow-up presentation. Let's say we're working a spinner bait along a line of brush. You catch a fish, but you have a hunch that there's more fish in the area, but they're not biting the spinner bait. You take out a Texas rig or a jig or a Ned rig, Nako rig or whatever, and you cast in that same area. But if you work it quickly, chances are you'll miss that fish, any fish that are still there. But if you let that bait sit and soak for 15 or 20 seconds, sometimes even longer, there is a great chance that that fish that's there will pick up on that bait and you'll end up catching it. And if you can do that, you can repeat that process over and over and over again. Patience is something that comes with age. That's what we're told, right? But no matter how old you are, no matter if you're an experienced angler, no matter if you're a beginner angler, it's something that we can do right now that's going to help us catch many more fish. It would be amazing if this boat decided one time it wanted to go straight. That would be amazing. Gotcha. Come here, you. I gotcha. You're not going anywhere. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, kids. Oh, that's a real good one. Oh, that's a good one. He's pulling the boat everywhere, so... I got you. Oh, that's a... Oh. Oh, low brow got an eight pounder. Ooh. 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 Oh, that's a big fish. Get one more look at this big thing. Gorgeous fish. There she goes. Now before you go and think that this is something that only applies to finesse fishing, dragging a worm, doing a nako, a ned rig, or dragging a jig, or something like that, that's often not the case. You can actually work a jerk bait the same exact way. Twitch, twitch, pause. And even in the summertime, even when the water's warm, let that bait sit there. Let it soak. A lot of times, that's when that bass is thinking, well, do I get it or do I not get it? Or sometimes there's three or four bass and they're all eyeballing until one of them, well, they just can't resist any longer because they're afraid one of the other ones is going to get it and they jump up and they chomp it. So even a lipless crankbait, you can let that dead stop. You can drag that along, right? Rip, pause, rip, pause, like we've talked about before and just let it sit there on the bottom. I've had fish take my crankbaits off of the bottom and run away with them when I was doing something completely different. I'd be looking at my phone or I'd be fiddling with something in my tackle box and the next thing I know my line's running off because a fish has popped that crankbait off of the bottom and they're running off with it. So it does not have to be a finesse technique. So pause anything, especially if the bite is really tough. It can be a great way 
to get those inactive fish to become more active. If your body of water is exceptionally pressured and whose isn't anymore, right? It's a great way to trigger those fish to bite because sometimes even when that reaction bite isn't working because sometimes those fish, they just don't want it unless they can have a good long look at it. They can get wary. They can understand that, you know, that's a bait. That's a lure. That's not real. Sometimes if it sits there on the bottom for a minute, they say, hey, that's an easy meal. I'm going to go ahead and eat that. It's a great way to trigger those otherwise shy fish and otherwise inactive fish into biting your bait. It does not have to be a finesse presentation. So it's something that I've been working on a lot lately and it has done wonders for how many fish that I'm catching. This little lake has got so many people on it, I have to find any means that I can to catch the fish that other guys are missing. And it paid dividends for me even today. So there you have it. Sometimes the best way to catch more fish is to slow way, way down. Let that bait soak sometimes for 15 or 20 seconds or more. And you'd be surprised at how many extra fish you can catch that way, especially on a pressured body of water. Give it a try. I know you'll have success with it. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.